Over the course of the past 12 months, a lot of people have mocked me for being too overly optimistic when it comes to renewable energy. I firmly believe the world is becoming a better place every day of the year, in particular when it comes to clean energy. These two recent stories prove my point. It's happening faster than anyone realizes. 83% of new power capacity in 2021 came from renewables. 83%. People are telling me, no, it's coal. It's all coal. It's all coal and gas. The numbers tell a different story. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to have you here. You know, I love these kinds of stories. They excite me. They make me feel good about the world that we live in. And yes, there's heaps of things that suck about the world, in truth. But there's also heaps of things that we should be proud of as a human race. This is why I love entrepreneurs. I love their drive. I love their commitment. I love their passion to make the world better. Not just necessarily to make more money, but to improve the planet. And that's what a lot of entrepreneurs are doing now. The Electric has just reported that in a world first, solar and wind generated more than 10% of power for 50 countries in 2021. Not five, not 10, 50 countries, right? Used more than 10% of solar and wind as part of their energy generation. Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters because solar and wind get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And that's been happening now for more than 20 years. The cost of solar has declined by 89%. The electric says that wind and solar, the fastest growing sources of electricity, reached a record 10% of global electricity in 50 countries in 2021. Now, it's either 10% or more, according to a report released today by independent energy think tank Ember. Overall, clean sources generated 38% of the world's electricity in 2021, beating coal at 36%. Clean sources generated 38% of the world's electricity in 2021. That number is only increasing every single month of the year. A lot of people have been criticizing me for my statements about renewable energy, saying that it's getting better, that it's going to become the primary source of power. Yeah, it's definitely happening. This is unprecedented solar and wind growth. It's growing exponentially. Well, seriously, I know people like to use the word exponentially. They throw it around like it's some sort of, I don't know, catchphrase, I guess. But actually, it's true. If the 10-year average compound growth rate of 20% can be maintained to 2030, solar and wind would grow enough to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade, reports Ember's third annual global electricity review. That is amazing news. I'm stoked to hear that. The report covers electricity generation for 209 countries from 2000 to 2020. The latest data for 2021 for 75 countries, representing 93% of global power demand. I've got to give a shout out here to Ember for actually doing this work. I'll put a link in the description below to their site. Globally, the share of wind and solar has doubled since 2015 when the Parry Agreement was signed. So in spite of what all the conspiracy theorists would have you believe, and the naysayers, the doom and gloom, the doom and gloomers, actually, yes, the world is most definitely getting better when it comes to clean energy generation. Good news for electric cars. What are they powered by? Electricity. What are they going to be powered by? Pretty much solely by 2035. In my view, it is clean energy. Because why? Because money. Clean energy is cheaper. 50 countries generated more than one-tenth, 50, well over one-tenth, in fact, most of them, from wind and solar in 2021, including all five of the world's largest economies, the US, China, Japan, Germany, and the UK. Seven new countries passed the landmark for the first time in 2021, including China, Japan, Mongolia, Vietnam, Argentina, Hungary, and El Salvador. Now, I know many of you have commented on some of my, not many, but some of you have commented on some of my videos saying, you're wrong, Viking. In China, they're building millions of coal plants. How do these numbers then suggest 
that actually renewable energy as a percentage of China's grid is increasing, right? This is saying it's increasing, not decreasing. Therefore, the build out of renewable energy in China has to be happening quicker than the build out of all these new coal plants that China's building. Yes, they are building them, but clearly they're focusing more on renewable energy than they are on coal power plants. Because why? Because money. I've said this many times. Renewable energy is now cheaper. The Netherlands, Australia and Vietnam have adopted wind and solar the fastest. Well done to my fellow countrymen. I know a lot of you have solar. Congratulations. With around one-tenth of electricity demand switching from fossil fuels to wind and solar in the last two years in those three countries. Well done to Vietnam as well and the Netherlands. I mean, Netherlands doesn't have that much sun compared to Australia. We've got a lot more sun than you guys, so obviously it makes more sense for us to transition, but awesome that you guys have done so well. And Vietnam, who would have thought? I mean, one of the sunniest countries on the face of planet Earth doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, all of Africa, all of Southeast Asia, think of all the sun they get. That's the great news, right? I believe, I firmly believe that the ability for these people to bring a lot of them, many of them, many millions of them out of poverty will be to be able to generate their own energy. Once the cost of battery storage continues to go down to the point where it's at marginal cost and solar continues to decrease, I think many, many, many millions of people will be able to bring themselves up out of poverty. And that's what I see in this. I don't just see one thing where we're saying the world's better for us because we're stopping global warming or at least decreasing the rate, the speed of global warming. I also think it's going to help many, many people to improve their lives in many other ways as well. 10 countries actually generated more than 25% of their electricity from wind and solar in 2021. This was led by Denmark, Luxembourg, and Uruguay at 52%, 43%, and 47% respectively. Now, there are actually a couple of African countries which are over 90%, so maybe they didn't look at those countries as well. Ember's global lead, Dave Jones, said, We're getting closer to that break even where wind and solar can cover new electricity demand, but we're still not quite there. If we maintain these growth rates we see, we will be there shortly. Coal made a bit of a comeback as well, unfortunately. However, electricity demand has rebounded to the largest ever annual increase in 2021, plus 1,414 terawatt hours, the equivalent of adding a new India to the world's electricity demand. And that's driven up use of fossil fuels, particularly coal. Obviously, this is like a post-COVID response. Economies are grinding back into gear and using much more energy than what they were before. In 2021, coal power saw the fastest growth since at least 1985, plus 9%, rising to a new all-time high of 10,042 terawatt hours. The record rise in coal was not matched by global gas generation, which increased by only 1% in 2021. The increase in fossil fuels pushed global power sector emissions to an all-time high, beating the previous record in 2018 by 3%. The Electric says that this report demonstrates we are at an inflection point with both renewables and fossil fuels. Countries must surge ahead with renewables, thus shedding the need for fossil fuels, and they need to be embraced on a massive scale. Renewable leader Denmark has demonstrated that renewables can be successfully integrated into a grid. But as the world adapts to living with COVID-19, power demand surged, and with it, the use of coal. Ultimately, coal-fired power must be phased out in advanced economies by 2030 and globally by 2040. We have the technology. The technology gets better every year. The efficiency of solar panels, the cost of solar panels declines while the efficiency improves. The same is going for wind generation. The exact same thing is happening for battery storage, which is a necessary part of this whole ecostructure. Right? This whole ecosystem needs energy storage. The more batteries we have in electric cars, eventually those batteries will be used in energy storage. No, they won't get thrown away. No, they don't go into landfill. Yes, they'll be recycled. Yes, they'll be reused as they are. Look on eBay. Look how many literally tens of thousands of Tesla batteries are recycled literally every single year. The exact same thing will happen for batteries from all electric cars. They'll see second life, third life, fourth life is recycling, goes back into the same system. It's perfect. Okay. The US, how are you guys going over there? Well, 83% of new power capacity in 2021 came from renewables in the United States. So well done. 
Kudos. That's fantastic news. New US power capacity by source. Renewable energy power plants continue to dominate new power capacity additions in the US. Clean Technica reports that in December, approximately 80% of new power capacity in the US came from renewables, following an even bigger month of November in which the split was 90% for renewables. For the full year, renewables accounted for 83 to 84% of all new power capacity in the United States. I could not be happier to hear that. I think that number is going to increase to 100% within the next few years. In fact, I'd be willing to bet anyone pretty much any sum of money that it's only going to be a few years before that happens. It's simply the only possible mathematical, logical scenario that could possibly play out. In addition to that, you've probably seen my video about sodium batteries, how they're going to change the world. If you haven't, check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. If you start to understand what's going to happen with sodium batteries and what's going to happen with LFP energy storage as well, well, there's the solution. As you can see in the charts below, solar power has been the leading source of new power capacity in the past year. If you count small solar projects and large solar power projects separately, wind led the way in November. But even large solar power plants alone took the number one position in December and throughout the entire year in the United States. Aside from solar and wind power, one other electricity source is worth mentioning, natural gas, which really is not very natural. It's just another fossil fuel. Fossil gas power plants accounted for 10% of new power capacity in November, 20% in December, and 16% across all of 2021. Now, I don't think they make economic sense. I think a lot of this is probably like planned projects that were planned five years ago, and then it's just sort of too late for these companies to back out. Now they've signed contracts, everything's in the process. Maybe the building started several years ago, potentially. Anyway, that's what I think. This is a big shift from prior years, in which natural gas was a much larger share of new power capacity. New power capacity from natural gas took a big step down from 2019 to 2020. But then something happened. From 2020 to 2021, it took an even bigger gargantuan step down in terms of the percentage of new gas plants. The largest source of power stepping up to take over its losses have been solar power. So what is the total US power capacity by source? Well, it takes a long time to retire power plants and replace them with new ones. Sunk cost bias can be difficult. Thus, renewable energy's share of total power capacity always looks much worse than renewable energy's share of new power capacity. At the end of 2021, renewables accounted for about 26% of total power capacity in the United States, which I think is a really, really, really good start. That's up from 22% at the end of 2019 and 24% at the end of 2020. But obviously, growth of two percentage points per year is not all that inspiring when you consider the climate issue we currently face. However, the good thing to note is, of the December 2021 total, wind and solar accounted for 16% of all energy generation in the US. And that is winter in the US. So that's a pretty good number considering the previous year, it was only 12%. Now, realistically, there is still unfortunately a huge amount of coal and fossil gas power capacity on the United States grid, not to mention oil as well. Yes, in fact, oil is used for electricity production in some regions of the United States. Coal was at 18.5% of power capacity in December of 2020, and fossil gas was at 44%. That's down from 21% and 45% respectively in December of 2019. Now, it's a noticeable transition, but I believe that transition will begin to speed up over the course of the next few years. Nuclear power capacity has slid from 8.9% to 8.6% to 8.3% over the past three years. Oil has slid from 3.3% to 3.2% to 3.1%. Eventually, it'll disappear from the grid, I'd say by 2030. Hydropower has slid from 8.4% to 8.3% to 8.1% when looking at year-end figures. So obviously there's only so many rivers, so hard to manufacture new sources of hydropower. So how would this play out over the next few years? Well, if rooftop solar increases by only 
2% per year from 26%, given nuclear at 20%, then we would reach 100% by 2049. But we all know it's going to accelerate a bit quicker than that once we see continued cost reductions in the cost of installation of the panels and of the batteries for energy storage as well. Now, one of the key reasons for an increase in solar is that businesses are starting to realize that they can actually save significant amounts of money by using solar. And home solar is increasing fast as well, especially by people who buy electric cars. Very commonly, people who buy electric cars also will invest in solar. It's another one of the benefits of solar panels, another one of the benefits of electric cars, right? People who buy electric cars often buy solar panels and vice versa. The future of energy is coming from the people as they and businesses have the most to save. The only price that counts is the price that the customer will pay. And renewable energy will be significantly cheaper than fossil fuel powered energy within the next five years. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you see this as a positive or a negative? Do you think it's going to be better or going to, do you think it's getting worse or getting better? Let me know your opinion. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.